All right, it's time for my final thought. All right, shifting gears. Bodies believed to be those of 95 black Jim Crow era prisoners forced to perform free labor were unearthed in Sugarland, Texas, as a result of one man's quest to get to the truth. Now, Reginald Moore heard the stories of how Sugarland, a suburb of Houston and home to Imperial Sugar Company, was a sprawling network of sugarcane plantations and prison camps a century ago. From sunup to sundown, convicts were leased by the state to plantation owners to work in the fields chopping sugarcane, sometimes until they, quote, drop dead in their tracks, end quote, as the state convention of colored men of Texas complained in 1883. Does that sound familiar? Moore researched Sugarland slavery and convict leasing history for 19 years and gathered a hunch that the bodies of former slaves and black prisoners were still buried in Sugarland's backyard. He focused his attention on a site called Imperial State Prison Farm, the one that bore the name of the country's premier sugar company. It was there that the discovery of the 95 graves of the two dozen intact skeletons found all had African-American traits, appeared to be muscularly, muscularly built, Many had the same misshapen bones indicative of repetitive hard labor, and they ranged in age from as young as 14 and as old as 70. Now this is visceral, unflinching snapshot of the prison industrial complex in its earliest stages. People were buried in mass graves from working themselves to death to enrich the owners of a sugar dynasty, escaping one form of slavery only to be killed by another. Now, the practice was so lethal that it was outlawed in the early 20th century, but it's relevant to this day as the inequities of the criminal justice system are exacerbated when victims are forced to provide labor for pennies on the dollar for large companies and private prisons across the country. And yes, I do mean victims. Moore has volunteered to serve as caretaker for the graves of these men and has vowed to bring meaning to their respective ordeals. Hopefully his work will influence sentencing laws moving forward and prevent future generations of falling back into what's become the 21st century's version of legal slavery. We're going to continue this conversation on Facebook Live. You guys have a beautiful Thursday. Get up, D.C.